In this video, we'll be going over how I created this render of some kimchi fried rice that, hopefully, would make even Uncle Roger proud. We can start off by taking a quick look at our references. Here we have some kimchi fried rice with an egg on top, cooked on top of a cast iron skillet. We also have the dimensions and the images that we will be importing inside Blender to use as a base. Now that we're inside Blender, we can import the reference image, delete the default cube, and add in a cylinder. I usually start off with a 16-sided cylinder since that's easier to manage. Because we have the dimensions, we can just input the exact numbers here inside the radius and depth. Then we can select the top edges, add a triangle cap, then scale and position the reference so that it aligns with the cylinder. Just gonna add a subsurf modifier, select the top faces, inset, extrude that in, then scale the bottom part to match the reference. Just imported another reference image so that we can have a better idea of how to do the other parts. Scale that in, then add some edge loops to sharpen the edge. It's always a good idea to add a mirror modifier when dealing with symmetrical objects like this. Add two edge loops here, and then delete the outer edges. Then I just connect those vertices to the corner, then delete these edges in order to create quads. I do the same thing on the other side. Now that we have that, we can select the edges on top and move it outward in order to create that lip. We can add some edge loops to sharpen it up. We can then move on to the front. Just adding in some edge loops so that we can extrude this face in order to create this part. Slide these edges, then merge vertices. Couple more edge loops to sharpen this up. And for these end gons, we can just delete them since subsurf turns everything into quads anyway. Now it's time for the handle. Add another edge loop there so we can extrude this piece out, scaling on the x-axis. Extruding a bit more and adding more edge loops to sharpen it up. We can select these edges and slide them down a bit to round out the handle a bit more. Then select these faces and then set them to create the hole. I use vertex snapping in order to align these vertices and just match it up to the reference before I connect them up. Just gonna adjust this a bit more and the handle is done. Like with the end gone earlier, we can just delete this edge to keep it smooth and then select these faces and inset in order to add an edge loop inside. We can then close up the bottom and the cast iron skillet is done. Now we move on to the wooden spoon. Just like before, import your reference image. I started out with a cube and then deleted half, and then added the mirror modifier, then I just matched the vertices to the reference. Then I selected these edges, extruded them inward, and then I tried to close it up with the grid fill but it didn't look right, so I closed it off with the triangle cap. Moving on to the rice, we can import another reference image right underneath the skillet, add a plane, and then trace the general layout of the rice. Connect these up, press F to fill, and an inset before applying a grid fill. We can move this down until it's touching the skillet, and then we can move over to sculpt mode. In order to create the rough shape of the rice, we can turn on dine topo so that we can just keep on sculpting. I mainly use the clay strips brush in order to layer more and more geometry. We can kinda just go ham on this until this starts looking like a big clump of rice. I also went into edit mode, extracted a couple of faces, and turn those into smaller clumps of rice to sort of just scatter around. Just sculpting on those a little bit to make them look clumpy and doing that a couple more times. Sometimes I use the grab brush to move vertices around to make it look more organic. Now we can bring back the spoon and place it over here. We can scale it up a bit more so that it's more in line with our reference. Select these edges at the bottom, scale them on the z-axis, and then bring them down a bit so that there aren't any holes. We can smooth it out and sculpt over it again to make it look more even. We maybe add a couple more tidbits in the spoon. To do the egg, I just added in a plane and subdivided it a couple of times before positioning it on top of the rice. We can use proportional editing to shape it around a bit closer. 
Then we can start UV unwrapping. For the egg, since it's just a plane, it already has UV, so we can just leave that alone. We can just select the rice and unwrap it. No need to add seams anywhere. Make sure that the tidbits are also unwrapped and packed together with the rice. For the spoon, I thought about unwrapping it normally, but in the end, I just ended up deleting the UVs for it, and also for the skillet. I'll let Painter handle the UVs for those. Now that we're inside Painter, we can import the mesh. Make sure that Auto UV is set to generate only missing data. Let's bake out some maps for our mesh. A really cool resource that can help us out right now is Substance Source. We can access Source through Substance Launcher, and this is where we'll get our cast iron and egg material. You can send these straight to the shelf which is a single click. Now that we have them inside our shelf, we can drag and drop the cast iron material, set it at the triplanar projection, and then scale it up a little bit. I added in a fill layer, turned off all the channels except for roughness, and added the paint layer in the black mask to paint in some oil. Painting inside the fill layer is useful because we can control the parameters at any time. I added in a bit of blur right on top to feather out the effect a little bit. I added another fill layer with the base color, roughness, and high channel active to act as the stuff you get from the Maillard reaction. I ended up duplicating the oil layer so that we can add in a fill layer inside the mask and then multiply it on top of our paint layer to isolate the dark parts. Then we can start on the egg. Just drag and drop our egg material from source and adjust the parameters a bit to your liking. Now as you can see, we need to make the area outside the egg transparent. We can go to texture settings, then click on new shader instance. Then we can go on shader settings and switch that to PBR metal rough with alpha blending. At this point, I decided to activate some post-processing effects. I turned on tone mapping and switched the function to log, activated subsurface scattering, and activated color profile and switched this to the ACES color profile. Then I switched the environment map from Panorama to Bonifacio Street. Here, I imported the rice material that I made inside Substance Designer and then set up the triplanar projection and scale it up a bit. It looks really flat, but we can fix that by going to shader settings and turning up the subdivision count, and then adjusting the scale. We're also going to add a scattering map under texture set settings in order to use subsurface scattering. Just add a fill layer on top with only the scattering channel on, and we can adjust the slider until it sort of looks like rice. Moving to the spoon, just drag and drop a wood material and again, Set up the triplanar projection to get around the stretching issues from auto UVs, then rotate it a bit so that the wood grains flow along with the handle. Going back to the rice, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to get it to look bright and orangey, but using a couple of fill layers with different shades of orange and multiplying them on each other seemed to do the trick. Also important to have some control over the roughness to give it some variation. Back to the spoon again. I added another fill layer with a black mask and set it to multiply to get that stained look. Just painting it over the spoon where I wanted, adding some variation, and then adding another fill layer on top with a paint layer and the regenerator multiplied on top of it, and making sure it only shows up on the edge of the spoon to give it a sort of charred look that you get while cooking with the wooden spoon. I add a bit of a blur and then paint it more around the edges. Then finally, adding in some roughness variation that you probably won't notice, but it's always nice to have. Just adjusting the egg a bit more and then we can export these textures now. For me, I decided to put them on a desktop. Over here in the output templates, you'll notice that there's a texture assigned to the alpha channel of the base color. That's where our opacity map is stored and that'll come in handy later for the egg. Just export these out and we can move on to Blender. Don't forget to export the mesh too since we used auto UVs on the spoon and the cast iron skillet. Back inside Blender, we can now import the mesh, and as expected, it's got the UVs we made inside Painter. To make the node editor friendlier to use, go to Preferences, Add-ons, and make sure Node Wrangler is toggled on. Now inside the editor, we can click on the principal BST of node, press Ctrl+Shift+T t to bring up the import window, 
And here, you can select all of your texture masks for that mesh, and it'll automatically connect everything. Let's just do that real quick for the rest of the meshes. Just Ctrl Shift T all the way until we have everything connected. Don't forget to lower down the metallic value for everything else except for the skeleton, since they're not metal. Here, we can drag the alpha layer of our base color to the alpha part of the shader, and then import our height map and connect it to the displacement node, then connect that to the material output. Now it's time to import an HDR. Just add an environment texture under world, go over to the environments folder inside wherever you installed Painter, and import the Boniface Street environment map. For the displacement to work, we need to go to cycles, make sure it's set to experimental, and then GPU compute. Add a subsurf modifier and toggle on adaptive subdivision. Then go to the material tab and under settings, change this from bump only, displacement only. And then we'll end up with this monstrosity. To fix this, just lower the scale value in the displacement node. We can also add in some subsurface scattering by playing around with these values. Just tweak it until it looks right to you. I do the same thing with the other meshes to make them pop out a bit more. After applying displacement to the egg, we can adjust the vertices a bit using proportional editing so it doesn't clip into the rice. Now it's time to add in some green onions. Just add it in a cylinder, select at the top and bottom faces, and then put in an inset and then bridge edge loops to create a hole. Select the rice, add in a particle system, and select the mesh which is made to scatter it around. Set the orientation axis to normal and tweak the randomize and randomize face parameters until it looks okay. Adjust the scale height too. Switch over the weight painting so that we can paint out where we want the green onions to be. Ended up erasing the portion in the middle where the egg is. And now, just switch over to render view. Tweak the settings a bit more until it looks right. And last but not least, import some assets from the 3db asset library. Just gonna bring in a wooden chopping board and snap that into place right under the pan. Lined up the camera and imported the dinner table. And that's about it. Now, is this the tastiest looking fried rice render out there? Not exactly. But was it a simple thing to do because of the power of substance and blender combined? Absolutely. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, see you around.